Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Brief History Of and today we'll be looking at the Poplar Tree Incident of 1976. There's an age-old joke about how many people it takes to change a light bulb. This can be said about the US and South Korean army and cutting down of a tree. However, there's more to the story and if I said otherwise it would sound a bit harsh. The amount of people that it took to cut down this poplar tree in the JSA area of the DMZ is quite unbelievable. The fact that the tree is in the DMZ is the important part of the story though. The DMZ is, for the uninitiated, the demilitarised zone between North and South Korea and the JSA is served by both UNC forces as well as North Korean forces. JSA stands for Joint Security Area and is one of the most guarded and watched pieces of land on the planet. The tree was located by the lovely named Bridge of No Return. The area near the bridge had been notorious for North Korean soldiers attacking and attempting to kidnap UNC personnel. Because of this, the tree was ordered to be trimmed to help improve the line of sight between Checkpoint 03 and Outpost 05. On the 18th of August 1976, a team of five Korean Service Corps and UNC security team consisting of Captain Arthur Boniface, his South Korean counterpart Captain Kim, the platoon leader of the current platoon in the area, First Lieutenant Mark Barrett, and 11 enlisted personnel set out to prune the tree. Due to the rules of the JSA, only 5 armed officers and 30 armed enlisted personnel were allowed in the area at one time. Because of this, Captain Boniface and Captain Kim didn't take their sidearms with them. Around 15 North Korean soldiers arrived and watched the trimming for around 15 minutes before Lieutenant Pak Chol abruptly told them to stop cutting the tree, citing that Kim Il-sun had personally planted the tree himself. Captain Boniface told his team to carry on with the cutting. This unsurprisingly raised tensions between the two parties, especially in a place where even a wrong look could start World War III. Pax sent a runner across the Bridge of No Return and within minutes approximately 20 North Korean soldiers turned up armed with crowbars and clubs. The demands to stop cutting the tree continued until Boniface turned his back upon Pak. Tensions boiled over and Pak told his soldiers to kill the bastards. Using axes dropped near the tree, the North Korean soldiers attacked Boniface and Barrett. Boniface was knocked to the ground and was bludgeoned to death by at least five soldiers. Barrett managed to escape and took cover in a ditch across the road from the tree. The UNC guards at Outpost 5 couldn't see where Barrett had hidden. The whole event took place in less than a minute until UNC forces managed to break up the North Korean soldiers and place Boniface's body in the back of a truck. Outpost 5 noted that the North Korean soldiers were acting strangely around KP-8, which was right next to the area where Barrett had hidden in. After 90 minutes, Barrett was reported missing and Outpost 5 reported the strange behaviour of the North Korean soldiers. At this point, a search party was sent out to the location and Barrett was discovered badly injured. He was rushed to hospital but unfortunately died en route. As you can see, there are a lot of photos taken during the incident as almost everything in the JSA is filmed and taken note of. True to form, North Korea released a press release very soon after the incident. Around 10.45am today, the American imperialist aggressors sent 14 hoodlums with axes into the joint security area to cut the trees on their own accord, although such work should be mutually consented beforehand. Four persons from our side went to the spot to warn them not to continue the work without our consent. Against our persuasion, they attacked our guards en masse and committed a serious provocative act of beating our men, wielding murderous weapons and depending on the fact that they outnumbered us, our guards could not but resort to self-defense measures under the circumstances of this reckless provocation. The US government's advice from the CIA was that the attack was premeditated and the US forces were put onto DEFCON 3. The South Korean president, Pak Chung-hee, refused to sanction a military reaction. Now this leads us to probably one of the most heavily armed acts of tree surgery in history. On the 21st of August, Operation Paul Bunyan was put into effect. The operation had been planned for two days in the White House as a show of US and Korean force, but done so in a way to reduce the risk of escalation. At 7am, a convoy of 23 vehicles entered the JSA without pre-notifying the North Korean government. Two 30-man strong platoons were used as security for the operation, and two 8-man teams were used for the actual cutting of the tree, armed with chainsaws. You might say that is a big display of force in its own right, but it does get better. A further 64 South Korean trained Taekwondo Special Forces were used and several of the Special Forces had claymore mines attached to their chests and an M728 combat vehicle had its main gun aimed at the Bridge of No Return because, well, why the hell not? 
In addition to the ground forces, 20 utility helicopters were circling the area as well as 7 Cobra attack helicopters. Not enough? Well, don't worry, there's a little bit more to come. Several B-52 bombers, some reportedly nuclear ready, as well as air fighting escorts were also in the air nearby. Oh, and USS Midway was ready offshore just in case that wasn't enough. And as a final measure of fun, around 13,000 troops were ordered from Okinawa and the rest of UNC forces in South Korea were put on high alert. After the massive show of force got into position, the army engineers got about to the task at hand, which in case you had forgotten, is to cut down a tree. Quickly, nearly 200 North Korean soldiers showed up and set up machine gun emplacements aimed at the South Korean and US forces. Upon seeing the North Korean show of force, Lieutenant Colonel Vera called the air support to come over the horizon. A dozen C-130s were placed on standby as support in Yokota Air Base. The total tree felling took 42 minutes, leaving a six-foot stump and did not result in a massive shootout, which is actually really surprising. Although the operation concluded without any shots being fired at the JSA, tensions did rise over the DMZ and a number of shots were fired at helicopters along the border. The UNC demanded that an apology was given from North Korea, but only a lacklustre statement was released. It read... It was a good thing that no big incident occurred at Pamyamjom for a long period. However, it is regretful that an incident occurred at the joint security area this time. An effort must be made so that such serious incidents may not occur in the future. For this purpose, both sides should make efforts. We urge your side to prevent the provocation. Our side will never provoke first, but take self-defense measures only when provocation occurs. This is our consistent stand. This was seen as a step in the right direction from North Korea as at least some responsibility was omitted. Well, you know, kind of. The stump of the tree remained until 1987 when it was replaced with a stone monument to the two men who died setting off this rather bizarre set of events. Improvements were made to the JSA to help reduce the risk of clashes between UNC personnel and North Korean soldiers, including the decommissioning of Checkpoint 3. Some of the wood from the tree was turned into a swagger stick. Wow, well, kind of on a side note, I now do want a swagger stick. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Did you enjoy the video? I hope you did. And if that's the case, please click subscribe, like and comment. And also, if you could, it would be absolutely amazing if you could share videos on any type of social media. And also, you can always follow me on Twitter, which is at plainly underscore D. Once again, thank you very much for watching.